uh, April 10th, um, 2019, uh, and we were at the police station uh, community room, and this is being taped uh, for uh, broadcast by Amherst Media. I'll call us to order. I don't believe we, we got any minutes to approve, um, so we can skip that item. There's, I do not see any public in attendance. Um, and so I heard a volunteer for doing notes, so we can move quite quickly along today. Um, that brings us to reviewing the draft report. I think we left off at 6, about to transition to section 6.8. Um, yes. But I'll just ask to make sure that no one had something that was lingering that I don't remember. Okay. Oh, sorry, Rudy. Um, I think I had just a couple of things looking at it again. Um, the discussion of power purchase agreement, I think it would be good to have an asterisk about that because um, Section 2C of the Zero Energy Bylaw basically doesn't, my read of it, and I think this is right, is that um, it wouldn't allow it unless we exceeded, we, it wouldn't allow a power purchase arrangement unless we exceed the 10%. Um, I think since it could be an item of discussion, it might be good to just you know something to that effect. You guys can take a look because that talks about town-owned, new, and independently measured renewable energy systems for the project. And if the cost exceeds that 10%, then you can do these other things. So um, it might just be a good qualifier and um, looking Rudy, at Rudy, could you just tell us which section that is? Section yeah, sorry. 2C, 2C of the bylaw. Oh, no, where oh. are we in our document? Oh, in our document? Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, I think there's a couple of discussions of power purchase and the cost, like, for example, on the, um, the Yeah, 6.2, and, and I think there's it appears elsewhere where you just discuss the total cost would be at X for the solar unless we bought it, unless we did a power purchase. Systems at Amherst Zero Energy Bylaw D item D in the summary of that, um, or can be obtained through direct purchase or through leasing or power purchase agreements with third-party private entities. It might be good just to put in a qualifier. So to add an asterisk to that section, <coughs> referring to the energy bylaw that indicates power purchase agreement not allowed unless the cost of the Unless the ten percent premium costs, cost yeah, of unless that features exceeds ten percent. Yeah, and then you have more leeway about how you're yeah. getting that okay. purchase. Um, and the other thing, and I, it's been sort of nagging me a little bit. Um, the EUI fifty, I, I think it should just be raised is whether the EUI fifty. Uh, approach would meet the standard of zero energy capable in the definition in the zero energy bylaw because that requires incorporating highly efficient standards to minimize the project's need for energy and I think it, would, it should at least be an open question whether a building that just meets current energy standards meets the test of that definition I, and so I, again, I think it, it's the kind of thing I wouldn't want to undo all the discussion because UI 50 is probably, it's important at least as a comparison, but if that's really no, doing nothing really special for energy efficiency, I think it should, at least people should look at whether that question of whether that needs. Whether it's, whether it's a wise thing to do, knowing that the UI 50, does not, is not really cutting edge. 
right? Yeah. It's just close. Right. It's just about code. It's just where we are building today. EUI 30 achieves a much higher level of energy efficiency in the building. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think anyone would argue that EUI 30 incorporates highly efficient standards to minimize the project's need for efficiency for, for energy, whereas EUI 50. So, yeah. anyway. I agree. So, cool. <laughs> so, again, I think just an asterisk note referring people, and that's in the definition of zero energy capable and section 1A of the bylaw that requires the project to be zero energy. Throw those thoughts in. Okay. Uh, any other items on, on six, or we'll move back to six point eight, or on to six point eight? Six point eight. Yeah, we got through it. I just want to make. I don't want to go too fast. Yeah, we didn't finish this one. We didn't. Yeah, finish I have a it feeling like it's open. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but um, I don't remember. I can look at the notes where we left the last comments I have. Um, My last comment had to do with your request that in option B, we talk a little bit about the effect that uh, the wetlands delineation affecting yeah. the layout of B. And we said, well, we'll just change the layout. So okay. there's no question. And Irina, were you, I think, had other things. Do you, do you want to start with yours? Or? Um, okay, I had a couple of comments on section 618, page 13. Um, um, yes, page 13. So there is the site um, for option C. And I was wondering why does the site in this version includes one of the baseball fields? Um, I thought we had, so um, here, option C, the site goes all the way at the back and crosses this wetland. And why it was not agreed that it should be smaller. Um, why, why the site limit couldn't be smaller? Yes, and I think we had talked about this and I had reduced it, and, but then drawing still shows a big. Yeah, so we drew a red line delineating the limit yes. of the site. So your question is why? It's why doesn't it go close to the uh, playground, yeah. the horizontal line through the playground line? Without having the opportunity to go back and, and look at our notes, that it kind of corresponds to my memory. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we moved the red line. Yeah, it might just, be just because <laughs> it affects the cost twice. Um, because according to the calculations, I'm probably will discuss later. So part of the site we are not being reimbursed, so the tighter the site it is, True. Right. it's more funds went back. Um, in the same page, my other comment, I saw. A phrase that some people might get confused. Uh, it says bringing in warm winter light to many of the interior classrooms. Um, and people always say, on the same page. Second line. Second, okay. third line. Third one? Bringing warm winter light? Into the interior classrooms. And for some people, it's going to scheme and say, wait, interior classrooms? Um, or maybe we can rephrase it. Um, you should simply say classroom. uh, classrooms. Classrooms. Classroom Cla facing classrooms. Cla yeah. Cardio facing classrooms. Yeah. But if once you have the interior, people will say, oh, we have interior classrooms. No, the second line on the top. When you start the description. Bring warm winter light to many of the interior classrooms. Yeah, put courtier, maybe. To many of the. Courtyard facing. To, to, to courtyards facing, to classrooms facing the courtyards. Yes. Okay. Just because it popped. Um, what page is that? Now we're out of the page numbers because we're in the This is page 13. Of oh, the PDF? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, 
the option C site in there. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, on page 19, option E, um, the third line, it was it read awkward, I couldn't, it took me a while until I fully understood. Uh, it says access to playfields has potential from the gym and third through kindergarten classrooms. Um, I mean, I think you mean the classes facing the west, east side, right? Or they, I would, instead of labeling by grades, I would label them by east facing classrooms. Sure, we could do that. This is sort of, to me, this is sort of one of those sentence fragments that needed to be cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah, so just reading. And then page 26. I don't know if somebody else has more comments in between. Uh, page 26. Um, that goes into the, the, already into the architectural narrative. Um, one of the things I had comments in general about this section is that we never discussed the architectural narrative. Um, so this was the first time we saw it? Well, we haven't discussed it, but you did have it earlier as part did of the we? pricing narrative. Uh, I think you this, got, this goes to an earlier question about whether this is a historically presented as a historical did, thing right. that we had, or if we should I don't be looking think, to I don't it, right? remember seeing this one. Maybe it was invented, but I don't remember seeing the architecture yeah, I, narrative. I think this whole pricing narrative was, was what we um, provided to you and then we provided to the estimator at the same time. Okay. Uh, so this was the basis for the right. estimate. We were just in, in this architectural narrative um, describing a standard of quality that we would typically see in elementary school without going through with you finishes, for example. Um, okay. As a feasibility level, we, we didn't want to get concerned about the kind of flooring um, as a finished cost yet, but we wanted to pick materials that were kind of consistent with our experience with public school work. So I, I, I didn't recall seeing this. I think the, the pricing narrative, it was really more about the, um, the HVAC systems and, and the other, the other systems. So, so I didn't recall seeing this either. And I, you know, um, okay. so I think, uh, I think, I don't know that we need to, you know, Go sure. into into painful detail about this. Maybe it fell out of the version you sent. The intent was to have the whole narrative get to you, but maybe that one wasn't. Yeah, interesting. I think that the idea is to just have a justification, basically, and essentially what you were saying, and that the choices that were made were based on sustainability or durability or something that sure. that says Understood. why you pick those, right. and whether they are in the in a general low, medium, or high price range, yeah. so we know how these choices would have impacted the cost. Yeah. That's okay. what so I'm for. Explain why what we're talking about and why, and and that these are the what we would recommend ordinarily in a classroom, and why that was conveyed to the cost estimator. Sure. Okay. Put in the content. Yeah. I think well, my, com my comment was, and for example, page 26, it mentions a skylight. This is main skylight. I was like, we don't have a skylight. Um, so I think maybe if you clarify that the, that we have is very general and is like standard and they didn't include the skylight in the quote, I'm OK. But if not, um, that's page 26 of the is Division eight doors and windows. Okay, so this sort of goes to what Maria was saying. Also, I think, in general, because I'm going to uh, um, echo or bring up again something Anthony was just mentioning again, is we talked about this last time that if there are substantive elements in um, the pricing narrative that have in fact evolved or changed, I think we'd want to make sure that they are captured here. If this is actually the document that we used to do the pricing narrative, and it's been updated to include any changes that have happened since then, then I would I am four squarely against going through this and editing it, because 
entire point is it's a document that was that in fact historically was used as part of this process. And so the point being, going back to what Maria was saying, is at the beginning of it, yeah, I think it would be important to, to do two things. One, to explain, as she was suggesting, how, how decisions were made around different elements, different finishing, pricing, all that kind of stuff, the, the, the criteria that you're using. And then I think second, literally, how is this pricing narrative used? Like I'm seeing this in, because I, I had the same, I had this feeling when I was reading through the whole document that when I hit the pricing narrative, it felt like at the old Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the others. The other, the other chapters, whether we wanted them edited in some way or not, told, were trying to tell, and we're clearly trying to tell a coherent story about what they were about. When I hit this portion of the section, I'm like, I don't understand why I'm looking. I mean, I, I got why we were looking at it, because I get what it was, but I was not sure why the reader was looking at it and what they're supposed to get out of it. And I just think at the beginning, it's important to place that context so that when someone's looking at it, they get what they're looking at, and they get what they might learn from it when they're digging through it. I think that makes sense. And I don't think it needs to be really long. No. no. In fact, I think it's better if it's not so that you know, their eyes don't glaze over it right. and they actually see it. Well, I think this also goes to what we talked about before, the executive summary in the beginning explaining, this is what you're going to see in those sections, mm -hmm. and this is why they're in there. And that was right. the process that was used in informing yeah. the and process. And I think, I think that makes sense, and then carrying it over to the introduction of the chapter so that if somebody goes there directly, they can see yeah. it there as well. Another possibility is you could move this whole section to the appendix yeah. um, if you want to break it out of the, the rest of the report, which I think reads, although being at 6.8, it's like the first item in the appendix practically. Yeah. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. Marina. So I have a comment because I don't think this is the document that they use for press quoting because there are some things here that were not included. So I want to make sure that there's no double counting. So for example, in page 25, of this document, Division 7 Thermal and Moisture Protection, so it says for all new constructions of in options A, B, C, and E, and e provide an underslab waterproofing membrane. And then for the other ones, um, talk about drainage and so on. So this is the. This was this modified this after the geotechnical report. Yeah, so this was modified so after the geotechnical report. So this is not what it was used. But the pricing was also modified to include that. Yes. And so this corresponds to the final pricing, um, we hope. Yeah, I mean, I we've okay, tried so to. We've tried to update I want to make sure that we pricing. don't double count. So if, they, if this was the original and then you modified, but we want to make sure that this has already been modified. And we are not double counting. They didn't include this in the original price narrative. You added this part on the second part. So that's. So it's good. Okay. Yeah, but it's yeah. not the one. It's not the original. It's not the original. original. Well, I mean, I, right. Just, I think fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I think. I, 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 if you actually listen to what I said a moment ago, what I actually said was the original pricing narrative as used with additional edits for, for updates that, for, 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 okay. for construction <laughs> modification. I mean, that's exactly what I, I mean, it's a paraphrase of exactly what I said a moment ago, okay. and that's exactly what this section reflects. Okay. okay. We just need to explain that, so that the reader knows, puts that in context. Yeah, so they know what they're looking at. Okay. Maria? I just wanted to get a clarification on the, uh, couple of these options, I think C and for, for sure E, so we're, we're on um, like page 19. Um, there's that 4,000, I think that says 4,000 square foot wetland soils area to be relocated. So on that, on the left hand side in the north, is that the part, is that what needs to be moved or is that where things are moving to because of fields touching in the south? I, can you just clarify that? Yeah, that needs to be moved. Okay, and that needs to be moved because the play area there is? Yeah, we're within the setbacks of that. Um, so we're assuming it needs to move so that our um, disturbance will be out of, outside of the setbacks. We're looking at the building um, primarily there. The lines? Where? The, the corner of the new addition uh, comes very close to the red line of the wetland. It, it's within the the two setback lines. So the setback lines have been revised. Um, 
and the building is just touching that outer new setback line after the red area is relocated. So I guess I'm not seeing the setback line. Um, it's that dashed curving line that sweeps right through the corner of the building. Um, Option D, page oh, yeah, 16. D. I'm on C. Sorry. I'm on D. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 I saw a little dash line. Yeah. I can see a dash line. Also. But, yeah. So on, so on yeah, E, exactly. you know, it, it's saying that you, know, you have to, and the only thing that I see that's crossing the, there, there's two dotted lines. One's a 15, one's a 100 foot yeah. setback. Right. Um, and they're both crossing that play area. Yeah. Right. And they're, they're drawn around the wetland after the relocation has happened. So that may be a little bit confusing. I can understand that. Um, right. I think Maria's getting, again, I think it, this is one of these issues about design came first and wetlands after. The playground could be more, with, it would be easy to find another spot for the playground. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is this is as it currently is, no relocation in D. Yeah. And then in E, we're showing it relocated because of the play area. Right. Um, so. The, the new lines, they do sweep through a little bit of play area, but that's the further out. Boundary. So can we add a note on the diagram that says uh, wetland has to be mitigated? Well, I guess the question is, eat that or move the play area. Um, because it's, it's not the building that it touches. And, and kind of likewise, I don't know if any of the fields in the south end, they, they look like two soccer field, two rectangular fields that cross the wetlands. Is that implying that that's, that's got any implication for those, those are fields? Existing, existing fields. Yeah. Right, so... Um, so they're not really an issue. Yeah, it just kind of, I mean, if, if you're looking at this and you're just like, I'm, I know that I'm supposed to be looking for the wetlands and where, you know, where there's setbacks and where there's actual wetlands and what's touching it. So I would look at that and say, and I would, I would raise a question, it's just like, is, is that field causing an issue and having it to move things. And up here, the, 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 the play area, the 5 through 12 play area in the northeast corner, you could move, I mean, you could put that in some other place and, and avoid touching those wetlands altogether. I mean, this is the so, kind of thing so, that we could. So a note that yeah. says playground in this area will affect wetlands and will require wetland mitigation. Or move the play area. Uh, no. uh, well, I, I guess the question I would have is, yeah. at this stage, um, is the, what, what is the potential risk of, of adding the note, as Richard has, has said, mm -hmm. acknowledging that you know, there may be other ways to do it, or may, yeah. maybe the note yeah. says, you know, in this configuration. Right. The it, play, yeah. A right. playground in this area will, right. affect, will affect the wetlands and right. will cause mitigation to be required. Yeah. So, and yeah. in the other end, we yeah. say existing play fields, or play fields already exist, mitigation not required. Yeah, well, and you can, I mean, I, 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 it's more of an and. I'm, I'm fine with saying that if the playgrounds stay where they are right now, you would have to mitigate, and that's yeah. fine. Or you move the playground, and the ones, you know, so I, so I think it's just, ex it's basically explaining that we did the designs before we had the survey, and so you could make different choices with the site that could uh, that could avoid the the, wet, the wetlands altogether, or you'd have to mitigate for them. Correct. Yeah. So there are strategies you could take. Exactly. Right. But that's Going actually forward. but that's actually a nice explanation because then right. it sort of plays out for someone. Yeah. Exactly and, what you have to do. And I would I would include it in the executive mm -hmm. summary at the beginning. Yes. That phrase, so that is very clear from the beginning, and maybe that wetlands were defined right. sometime during the process. Yeah. 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 So, and that that wetlands delineation can affect the cost. project going forward. And cost of mitigation based. Right. So, something in the executive session that explains the sequence of wetland delineation after the diagramming is done, and then some note on this plan. Maybe. Kind of yeah. And I mean, I think there's a couple, couple of the other ones as well. Like, see, it, I, I annotated it, so and I think you've got those, so you can, you can see those as well. I think it might be in C as well. Okay. Um, it'll come up again when we talk about eight. Okay. Uh, other, other comments, questions on six point eight.
remind me, and before, as we move on, was there a seven? Because I, I don't recall. It was one. Okay. Well, yes, what was seven, the intent of? So there was something in the table of contents, as I recall. Right. The local seven. actions and approvals is what okay. MSBA does for section seven. Okay. Um, so that that's kind of downstream of this. Their form that um, there's a, a local actions and approval form, which the committee needs to sign, and then I think it's the superintendent and yeah. certain people in town have to sign off on this as the preferred alternative. So obviously, we're not doing that. Okay. But the, uh, the section also typically has the meeting minutes. Right. Um, and so it could be used here, I think, to, well, you, we could put all the meeting minutes here for, for record if that's if that makes sense to you. Uh, we could also put some of the community outreach documentation here. Um, or we could just eliminate it. Um, so I just want to know if you thought that should be recorded in the, in the report or that's recorded elsewhere and preferred that way. Yeah, I thought last time Heather was here and she had some notes from the yep. public yeah. outreach sessions. We talked about putting them in here and explaining that this section is for that activity and this is when that activity occurred. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, community outline stuff makes sense. It's not really in a coherent, all the community outline stuff isn't really in one good place right now, so I think it makes sense in the report. Uh, opposed to putting minutes in there, I think that's going to bloat it. And yeah. they're already in one good. They're already in one repository yeah. on the town website. So. Yeah. Can I ask a question about that? I mean, eventually, when the work of the committee is done, does that is there a formal repository that someone can always go to online, or do you at a certain point have to go and access the things I, in paper form? Uh, no, no, okay. I don't. I mean, they don't even exist in paper form really. Okay, they're kind of, kind of online only. But I mean, the site the. The, our page will get moved into an archive section, but it'll, it'll all be there. Okay. Then the public can access that archive section. In perpetuity. Eric. Um, do you think we readily have a list of all of our meetings, like the dates? I believe so. Because what, what I'm just going to say, if we don't, I don't, if, if, the, if the minutes really are archived and Amherst Media has the video, I'm not opposed to not putting the minutes in, but I think it's actually important to put yeah. all of the dates of our meetings in there and then the public meetings as well i think i think that plus actually the the summary sort of plan and execution that heather put together should all be in there i think it's important to have it in there i, I was going to say the same thing it's, it's a very typical msba thing they like to see lists of dates um so fine um uh, but the other thing that um we might want to do is to give a little bit of chronology of our, um, our activities our as committee, a committee, yeah. and you know, who asked for it? When was it formed? When did yeah. the you know, when did the school committee form us? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be a, a, a bit of a timeline. Yeah, and that could be a kind of preamble to then the long list of meetings. So there, uh, the easiest place to get a list of all our meetings would be on the minutes page. If you click on all minutes, yeah, it has in or in chronological order every. every meeting we've had with a link to the minutes and our front page also has a, a rather sketchy timeline uh, but you could build you could build something yeah, you could build something a little more readable out of it so some sort of introductory paragraphs that that we we've cobbled together from that information yeah have a list of all the meetings that have occurred the public meetings or outreach meetings that have occurred yeah. Honestly, I, I, I wonder if it might make sense for us to develop that because because these guys did come in, uh, you know, yeah. eight months into the project, and right. it makes yeah. sense for us to do that. Part. That feels yeah. very much like an Excel spreadsheet, which I love. So I will volunteer. <laughs> okay, that. Yeah, I, write that down. I, I will. I will take that on. Great. So did we decide to put in the minutes from the two community outreach sessions? Because that, that's the one exception I would I would suggest. Right. I, I understand not having all our meetings, but the comments from the public at our official outreach sessions I think might be good. But I mean they're I don't think the be, minutes have are, are they're not a verbatim record of it and so in a lot of ways the video is the best way to to kind of get that we not, I'm not necessarily opposed to it I'm just kind of thinking of the downsides right. that, that come with that it, mm -hmm. that, I, don't know, I don't know if I should speak again um, yeah the minutes of the community outreach thing that I think they I think they open with 
the, pre the presentation attachment A is yeah. presented, and then it's just the questions, I think. Yeah. So I'm not sure how illuminating those are. Right. It was for you. I'm, I'm also going to speak definitely. against it because it kind of gives more weight to the people yeah. that came to that the, rather than the people that schlepped out here for our regular meetings <laughs> or communicated with us by email. Right. So. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. We're not. We wouldn't necessarily include all of that. So, Eric. Yeah, I, th I think, I think we should make a point in whatever sort of little introductory and, and list, lists of the meetings and stuff to make a point of the availability. Like we should give the link right. <laughs> in the document so someone knows where exactly to go on the town website and Amherst Media to find this stuff, so that we're we're really helping the Vale people to find the be the best record they can find of this. So we're live the, on will Amherst, the Amherst media Super. videos won't have a live on the website. They're on, they're on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. So they'll be around as long as YouTube is. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Topic topic for another day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Teach all the kids these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the other uh, comments uh, on section seven. Okay. We're going to look for that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. That essentially becomes a production issue that they need to have that to be able to to finalize the put it report. Yeah. Okay. So I have one last comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, right. mine is still on six point eight. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the issue about the site, you have them again on the end of the section where you put in big the sites. So when I was talking about all pages. what page are you on? Um, probably. Page one fifty seven, for example. Okay, so at the end of the narrative for pricing, we have all the drawings. Oh yes. yes. Yep. So the site drawings appear there as well. Yeah. So for example, for option one fifty seven, I saw it written down, is the one that corresponds to option C. C. Yeah. So again, um, the site, I think that one should be shrunk down to the. So here, okay. Oh, all the same comments. Oh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same comments apply to right. these ones at the end. So that's sure. not to forget about this. That's my general comment. Right. Okay. Maybe on those, um, that, you know, I, I see the dotted lines, and I know that those are setbacks, but um, maybe a little legend. A to label say. would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, now I have to go back to section. Six point eight. Six point eight. Sorry. It's okay. Any more on six point eight or so? Okay. Let's move on to eight. I'm just going to do a quick time. Check. Fixing the date on that, getting to November 2018. Um, and can you, um, it says mechanical additive options there. Um, uh, we should somewhere say that we're employing HVAC option six. I mean, it's sort of implied, but it's not specifically stated because it has options one through five. Um, and then I've got. Um, on, on all of the following ones, like for uh, 41 through whatever, you know, A through F, um, again, the date, but to specifically state at the top that this is, these are for EUI 50, HVAC option six, CM method, and a 2020 start year. Um, all the points. Uh, what pages were those? So it's 41 to through 46, I guess, okay. would be, or 45, I can't remember. To, yeah, through, well, no, F is, is 46. Um, and then um, I'm going to make, um, the, I, I talked last time about making the pitch for at least options, uh, definitely for A and possibly for B as well, um, including uh, EUI 30. Um, and, it, and the GC method, and how, you know, having like a similar sheet to, the, to this, but for option A, GC, EUI 30, HVAC 5, which is essentially the case study. But it would be nice to see it laid out in, in this format, a comparison. Okay, so another chart that has 
Do you want 30? HVAC 5. GC. GC method. And still, you know, the start. The start year should be the same. Yeah. Which will make the labeling even more important. Yes. So you know who you're looking at. Yes. Between the two. Yes. And uh, shouldn't we explain why we're doing that additional chart? Um, yeah, I mean, we do, you do that in the case that I can't remember which one that was, but we can reference yeah. that, or, or maybe, yeah, notate, like, this is what, right, if you're going to do, do this, yeah. is, this, this is what is we, this is probably what you should do. Yeah. yeah. I have a general comment about the appendix. If you could make a list at the beginning, appendix A1, this page, so and so, appendix A2. So the table of contents will have page numbers? It does list all the appendix sections. Okay. So you'll be able to go. But to even that. maybe I also that maybe that's because I didn't have that at hand and I was going through the appendix trying to find. Working off PDFs, you don't see the table of contents. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Right. There are there's sections. It, it's it's 8.4 cost estimates. So I think yeah. there's a page break there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then so my. My other comment was, I think I sent you this question the other day. When you do, in, you start in page 47, the summary, new construction total, total addition, addition total, renovation total. I think this needs a little bit of explanation of why these numbers, to what do they correspond? Because for me, it took me a while until I think you mentioned, oh, we just chose numbers to put. You're, you're on page 47 of appendix 47 and 48. Really? That looks like a... Um, you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I've lost my page again. <laughs> there we go. So, um, it says new construction, addition, total. Um, oh, okay. I think we... And when I was reading this, I was wondering to which to correspond, and when you start looking at the square footage, the total square footage in page 48 at the top in the description, um, we have 85,000 square foot as, for the new construction, 23,000 for the, the addition and zero for the renovation. But um, it has a next, so it was hard to understand why you had these numbers. I think it needs a clarification um, if it's. OK. We could add a clarifying statement that the following information um, is a, a building up of the cost per square foot for new construction, addition, and renovation. Well, but it's only for the renovation portion of one of option B, I think, because it's 23,000 square foot, it corresponds only to the renovation part, only to the... Yeah, the, the square footage is, don't actually make a big difference because we're, we're estimating um, addition cost per square foot. Yeah, but once I see these numbers, then I said, oh, but to... But the they, first do, thing they, they happen to correspond with various options, but the, the takeaway is a cost per square foot, which yeah. is then applied to all the options. Yeah. So it, it could be it's rather irrelevant that they yeah. happen to um, correspond. It, it could be done without putting for um, first 23,268. It could be done every 10,000 square foot. I, I, I think, are you wanting to maybe clarify at the top of 47? So rather than having the number of square feet, just saying cost per square foot for new, cost per square foot for add, cost per square foot for renew. Well, that becomes the takeaway of all this detailed um, estimate here is it, it builds up to be the cost per square foot for new, add, and reno. Right. And then those are utilized in the previous pages according to the proportions of new, add, and reno in each option. Yeah, that's um, right. Which I think, I think you get that. And so I think having the detail here, I mean, we could just remove the detail um, if this is confusing. I thought it would add credibility. Oh no, okay, I, no they, we, we don't need the detail. detail. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think but it was I think it's be, it's confusing to try to figure when it says it, when 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 it's listed as a certain number of square feet on the, the first page that that might 
that, that, that little box at the top of 47. Upper so, right. You mean, upper yeah, right. I, I yeah. see what you mean. Right, so if you just got rid of the number of square feet and just say for new construction, the cost per square foot is 296.75. And you might want to say direct cost. We could well. remove it there. I mean, Irene is also pointing out that those square footages keep coming back right through all yeah. the details. Yes. Um, and, and, and so that's the way this was developed, is there was a sort of sampling of the options that were used to estimate cost per square footages for those different right. types of construction. Would it be better just to remove that box if that, if that Perhaps is confusing? If, if that's um, enough. I, I, uh, I'm just pointing out that those square footages will continue to show up um, if, if they're deemed confusing. I, I think you need that box with mm -hmm. the final number. Okay. I mean, this is, this, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, gonna to say that this is going to be a very dense piece for any lay reader yeah, to is. make their way through it. Is. That's why I, I, just I want us to make this in. as clear as we can, so I'm not trying to yeah. in any way cut off suggestions, but it's going to be, this is a deep dive. Okay. <laughs> it is. Sorry. So, I mean, I, I, to me, yeah. to me, if the number of square feet that's, a, that's enumerated at the top is a challenge, then I would go with what Maria said, just get rid of it and use, just put in the cost per square foot for the different yeah. options or different yeah. approaches. Yeah, I would just that. That's fine. And then just that. move, move <laughs> on. Yeah. You know. I mean, at, at the same time, I mean, this is, um, we're editing Fogarty's document. I don't think that's a problem. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're not changing the, the estimate, we're mm -hmm. changing the yeah. format. So yeah, so so the table of cost per square foot is useful, and maybe that should be in big bold font because that's those are the numbers that we use. Yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. The right. fine font is is too much detail for the for the lay reader. Right. Uh, but we in the in the big bold box with the big bold fonts, it maybe it needs a description of what that is, which is a blended average of all of the numbers below. Right. But and yeah. and, and specifically say because people are going to look at that and say why are those 200 and the other ones are 500. So to specifically say these are direct costs without all the, you know, we're not even at construction cost yeah. per square foot and we're definitely not total project costs. So I For think some two, explanation of that, yeah. It helps, I think, that they correlate on the next page. Um, on the first page? On the summaries. So, uh, I mean, you can see that addition yeah. is carried at yeah. 299, 59, which is the same <coughs> I hope. Yes. It is. All right. Consistency. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I think if you're going to explain on the first, uh, that not first page, literally the second page, uh, that box, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't harm anything to say it's direct cost, not total True. construction cost. I mean, like, that, it doesn't harm anything to somebody to explain, like, oh, I get it. I mean, I mean, honestly, I think you're right, though, what you said a moment ago. I wouldn't go. You'd have to write a textbook yeah. on how to understand something like this in order to actually make it genuinely approachable, and that is not what we're paying you to do. Okay. So okay. having said all that stuff about the square feet, there, there is something on page 48 where there is um, a uh, 1030 slab on grade reno, which shows up in the new column. So I think that was just a, oh, yeah. oops, and needs to. True. And I don't know if that, well, I guess that would change the final. It will slightly reduce the yeah. cost per square foot of new construction, yes. I think Marie may have had a note towards the end of that final work. I'm not sure who's, who's that was who's that I'm looking at. It's great. In the red, all yeah. the red writing, that's me. You're <laughs> funny. <laughs> so you're, you're like, this is cool. It's like a mystery science theater or something like that. You're actually watching her comments before she makes them? No, I, this, this, this is, <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at her older version. She yeah. may have newer ones. But that would like, be much more entertaining. <laughs> that would be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Page 51, um, the granite curb. Mm. Um, existing conditions report says that we we're going to be reusing those. Is, are we reusing those? Or, and is this additional? 
did they did they account for that? I don't know. I have to ask. It doesn't look like we're reusing that. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the truth is, reusing granite curbs is is a is a kind of losing proposition. Yeah. The amount of effort that it takes to salvage them, whether they end up being exactly the shape and lengths that you need. I've seen projects in which contractors say, you know what, I'm going to pull out the curbs, I'm going to stockpile them, and I'm going to turn them over to the owner, I'll buy new curbs. So maybe maybe we need to add some, maybe we'll need to uh, edit the existing conditions Yes. with a footnote that says that cost where estimate, possible. where possible, um, or alternatively, replace them with new if it's more cost effective. Because that's what the estimator did. Yeah. He said no. And it's more consistent with our experience. And it's more consistent with our experience. Well, if we, if we are going to do that, um, I, uh, again, and I, I mean, wouldn't want to change, you know, go back and edit with the existing condition, but just to say, you, or you can make this choice, which is to, to use new and then to hopefully get that back to a restore <laughs> and, and yeah. have somebody else yeah. use it at least to be environmentally. <laughs> sure. I mean, if we're doing a lead project, we'll have to be managing all that waste. So right. It would be yeah. interesting right. to get a factory store. Of course. So, I don't know that, yeah, I think just making a note. But, I mean, I think it's a cost estimator's decision, like, what's more cost effective. Right. Yeah, it is not atypical of what we come up during yeah. construction. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's say, all covered. I really don't want to deal with this. We'll make sure it gets recycled. Exactly. But. I'm going to put in new, as, as you were just saying. Yeah, it's going to get covered by the natural process of construction. The, the cost estimator will do the thing that's more cost effective, and the bleed, we will do the thing that's, that makes sense for recycle reuse. Okay. So, do we need, before we, do we need like a, some commentary before the Fogarty estimate that says, uh, that they explain these things, like, you know? I would add, if, if we can, I would add them, because I think these are things that we are talking now, and it would be good to, we are generating this knowledge, and I think if we want to transmit it, people are not going to come and start looking at all the videos. And I think if in the narrative was, in the narrative was saying, oh, they are reusable, and here they have been quoting an explanation why? Yeah. I think. Well, uh, I, we could do that. We could we could insert some narrative before the cost estimate that flags these kinds of discrepancies between the existing conditions report. And Allison, are you going to Well, I guess I, I was actually not to put Ben on the spot, but I was going to ask Ben, having not been part of the committee as long as others, what do you think? Do you think it will be helpful to have that explanation? Or do you think it's overkill? I, I'm just trying to figure out, like, I, think I, I want someone's yeah. opinion who hasn't been part of this thinking. Uh, I was thinking from that, that yeah. perspective, like, yeah. absolutely, because it would it, you'd answer some questions before they needed to be asked mm -hmm. in the first place. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think the more clarity, the better. Mm -hmm. All right. If nothing else, it shows a high level of scrutiny. Yeah. <laughs> you want scrutiny, we'll give you scrutiny. <laughs> but as you, you were saying, though, that is sort of a, a, a rule thing you want, you're going to go through for any of these attachments and add some sort of introduction that provides whatever qualification to or what's in it, how it was used. Yeah, I, I think that would be helpful because um, it, it does show the level of scrutiny that we've all gone through yeah. this thing and explains it. But if somebody else sees some discrepancies, spots the same discrepancy, we cover it. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think that would help. Yeah, I agree. And I also think, frankly, if you're gonna if you're gonna make this thing more readable and usable, you wouldn't just do it for the section we bothered picking out right. and talking about. <laughs> You'd do it for all of them, so that people you know because what what may not seem confusing to us another reader is going to come along and say, I, I really appreciated the introduction to the other offended <laughs> section, yeah. I, now what do I do? Right. So. Yeah. Okay. so maybe along the same lines, um, 
it's the, on the same page when we're talking about the, the roadways and parking lots. Um, again, this is a, a factor of what came first, chicken and egg in our right. in here. Just to talk about, well, you know, what, whatever you do going forward, take a look at this and then for environmental and, and fiscal reasons, try to limit your paving uh, as much as possible. I think, that would, possible. I think that would help. I think I like that because between the granite and the, uh, the pavement is almost eight hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can minimize things, it's a huge part of the construction cost percentage wise. Um, mm -hmm. It goes on paving. I would like to if we have that money. We try to use it for other things. Okay. Um, I have a question on that page. And I see some numbers in red on the landscaping part, Lomond City. Um, which, which page is this? Page 51 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So these are because you changed, since the site scope changed this These moment. reflect those red boundaries in the site scope. Uh, uh, so they're okay. just revisions that were made uh, okay. through the process. So okay. we can turn them all black if you prefer, but it would be more consistent. Yeah. No, I was or just. A, I, was a, I wanted to make to clarify that this was changes with respect to previous versions. Uh, again, some explanation and in introductory narrative to this section would go a long way. Explain that. Gee, why are there red thoughts? What is that? Yeah, so that. I don't know if we need to explain that. I, I guess I, if you, you want to keep it in, we. we or a footnote it. at yeah. the bottom of this page, you know, text in red is site uh, scope reduction as a course of the project. Yeah, some question if you want to. Do I mean what? It's cool we did a lot of work, but what does the end reader actually care? So much as I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny or argue that. I'm just sort of wondering. I'm wondering whether actually, if you somebody wants to really understand the document, a footnote that says these lines were modified during mm -hmm. the project. I'm not sure that adds to my understanding of yeah. Of the final I think maybe it's yeah. to make a respect to differentiate because the the bottom line and the bottom left corner says prepared by Fogarty and Associates, and this wasn't prepared by Fogarty and Associates. I think this was a modification that you guys did in the, your office, right? We reviewed them with Fogarty. Are oh, you reviewed them yeah. with them? Yeah. So the question is, who has an associate? Because that would be the difference between. Yeah, I'd rather not pull out those kinds of differences, frankly. I'd rather okay. have it all be Black. where yeah. we ended up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know why we're doing that. What benefit is okay. that? So, okay. so, so I should have made it black yeah. to begin with, but right. this is a draft. So. Right. Make red fonts black. Right. Yes. <laughs> there we go. I mean, otherwise, we could issue a marked Redacted. Uh, no, no, we got like a marked <laughs> with version. Edit shown, edit, yeah. The edit shown on the side that could show all the changes. <laughs> we could do the earlier draft of the estimate. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, 52 is the page where we've got the, the wetland relocation stuff. Yep. So mm -hmm. um, that it, that is one of the, the places where you can say in, in your little introduction, like these numbers could theoretically go away with different choices. In some options. Yeah, yeah in, uh, in B, not in A. A is, you can't avoid it. Um, not A is packing load. No. Well, I thought it clipped it. Well, well I don't know. Is that what it is. A is uh, the parking, the driveway, the bus uh, loop on the. It's the wetland on the south side, is the driveway. Yeah, we can make that statement that any of the wetland relocation could go away if their design is different. And then we're already modifying B to eliminate yeah. it from that option. Yeah, I don't but think I, you can avoid the A part, the, the loop. I, I think at the end you have your, your designs, you did six of them or whatever, that it caused wetland relocation on half of them. You know, I mean, you could always have different designs if that was your priority. And there, and, and at some point in recent weeks, um, someone made the comment that, that the wetlands we have, by and large, at least in the, in the areas adjacent to the building, they're not high quality wetlands. No, really so not. It's, it is not like we're, we're um, yes, you want to avoid them where you can. You don't want to be frivolous. Um, but they've been mowed for yeah. decades. They've already been compromised. Right. So maybe 
some kind of statement like that would be helpful because people are going to see wetlands and think you're mowing down turtles. That, that I very much agree yeah. with. Okay. That without any qualification, people's summary. vision of what yes. a yeah. wetland is is very different than what we're talking about here. Yeah. Next. Uh, for page 56. So this is the, the survey, and, and um, do your drawings are it's much better to kind of understand where the wetlands are. So if somebody wanted to look at the site survey and just look at the whole parcel and say, all right, what's here that I have to worry about? There's really not a um, there's really not a map, a summary map. That's, that, that puts the important stuff like wetlands and setbacks um, and, and wildlife areas. Mm -hmm. So, or, it, or did I, am I not seeing it? I did may not have the it? final we did. survey. What's that? This, in the draft, I may not have had the final survey when I put this in here. Yeah. So if you have a new summary map, are you talking about the survey? Yeah. 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 And the only one I've got, it basically is just, it just says where the, the, the 10 different sheets are. Yeah. Right, but I think yeah. you had a revised survey, which then you sent me at the last well, meeting. That, that I didn't have the, that one. That was a flood map. Oh, is that what that one was? That, yeah. I sent you a flood map. Yeah. 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 No, 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 that's, that's what I sent. That I sent the revised. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. does that have a, does that have the like the whole parcel on one piece of paper? No. And I don't think so. I, I think that think would so, be no. it basically a composite like summary map. Yeah. Yeah, we already talked about it. I mean, you, I'm yeah. just saying we talked about it. I'm not saying I see it. I'm just saying we talked about that yeah. in the previous meeting that it would be helpful to have one map that sort of shows all that. Yeah, it, I think you'd go to your surveyor and ask for that. I thought you did that and then sent it to me, but you're saying the one I sent. I sent you the revised survey, but all that was was asking, asking for some better. The, re, the revision yeah, was based comments. on the feedback that we got in the meeting, which was about making some lines more clear, I yep. think, and okay. adding an addition. Some legends and yeah, yeah, there's, there's some a drainage line okay. that So in, in yeah. a funny way, you almost would want to see that map first before. What I, what I should also point out, that I don't disagree with the idea yeah. of, of that kind of summary map. Yeah. Um, going forward for the use of, of the documents that came out of our committee, these are, are helpful yeah. documents. So, someone oh, who's yeah, going to pick yeah. this up is going to want these, these larger detailed scale yeah. stuff. But yeah. I think for someone reading it, Want something you want to flip yeah. through? You, you want the whole picture, picture, right? Before you get into the fragments. Yeah. yeah, and it's probably not something that the survey folks are going to go back and do for us, but maybe we could do like a graphic. I mean, you've done graphics of uh, you know the, the, your designs right. A through F, but maybe just an ad, do the same thing with as is, and mark the, the wetlands and mark the the N H N H. What is it? N H E S P. Is that? Uh, Sorry, when when Murray is done. No. Uh, is that is that the appropriate course of action or should we go back to Birch here and ask for this? They'll, 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 want, they'll, want, they'll want a change order. They, they will, can we but communicate directly with Birch and yeah. say, look, thanks for all the details. Can you compile it into one map so we can make it legible in the report? Let's see see if they give it to us. Yeah. It's a it's a fair change order ask if they want to. Just but at the same time I, I think we're gonna have a little space. bit of yeah. I mean I think or assuming it's a fair change order, I think it's something that might be worth the the money. Well, did yeah. they give us a digital yeah. version? We have the cat file. We have the cat file. So what we'll do is we'll call Birch and say, we would like your permission to take your cat file and create one graphic and turn off the layers that are relevant for that yeah. compiled map and just focus on the major things <coughs> in the compiled map. That would be and then we'll put yeah. a note on that said. Map compiled by TSKP from original survey done by Birch. I have a question. You have the CAD file. Do we have the CAD file? I think that was in. I think that was in there. I should. It should. Yeah, it should go to planning, really. Yeah, I, would, okay, I would be astounded yeah. if they didn't have it. Cause that's part of their. Because we got I believe the, that was part of the submission. That, okay, yeah. then we got the PDF. I want to make sure that we went to the channels of the. Yeah, yeah I'm, pre I'm pretty, sure, pretty sure that was in there. I can double check. Okay. And we have an existing site plan, which is of similar graphic quality to the other site plans. Um, we can include the information about wetlands that we learned from the survey on that site plan rather easily. 
Yeah, that, that's that's not the existing. That's no, but it's yeah. it's that kind of graphic quality that I think you're going to get if you're trying to get all that information on one page. It's not the entire parcel, which right. is then hard to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Oh, right, exactly. But it's the yes. focus area. I yeah. 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 So if you're thinking about something like that, I think that's pretty doable. Okay. Cool. Next. Next. <laughs> Wants to go next. Um, page 68, just to have a um, brief summary of ATC's report in the executive summary for the introductory section. Okay. Did Jen generate something like that? I can't remember. Did he not? I don't remember. It's because this not, was done last spring. And yeah. I. I if if Jim did, that would also be good to include. I'll say if he did, I'll say if I can find yeah. it. I know he gave us a verbal summary. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember, trying to remember if he yeah. said something to But the, I don't remember if there was an actual written version uh, and, and that would be good to include. Yeah. I will I will look and see if it exists. That would be great if it exists. Next. Um, could you put in, in section 8.10 where we have the MSBA total project budget worksheets again the same stuff about this was for uh, and especially here to put that this was for enrollment of 465 students to, to be clear um, and then CM method EUI 50 HX6 start year I, I wrote here 2022 but that's wrong it should be 2020 I think. Sorry. sorry it's a uh, page 222 uh, that that's the the header sheet before you have all those MSBA total project budgets. Karina, I would add a comment to that. I think the 465 has to be qualified as 420 K through six plus 45 per K because that implies more administration space. So if you were doing 465 students that are K through six, would be a different correct. Yeah. Yeah, that introduction page that Richard described would yeah. capture this quite well. Because we'll uh, they're all they're all the same. Those those criteria. Karina, the question I have is, you put this. I, this is the first time I saw this nest deck enrollment projections. I was very curious. Um, Which page is this? Again? This is uh, the uh, starts. Yeah. Uh, eight section eight point nine section one ninety two one ninety three. Um, this is the newest one? This is what was given to us um, in okay. one of those initial workshop meetings. It wasn't 2018. Um, it was back in September or October, if I recall correctly. Okay. So if there's a more recent one and you want to include that instead, um, we can do that. We can yeah. pull it. We don't refer to these anywhere in the report. No. So I'm not sure that they need to be here. But, um, I think as a complete document, I think I was very curious. I said, oh, this is the first time I see this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there definitely is a, a more recent one because we used it for the facilities use advisory board looking at the middle school and high school. So I think there's like March, or yeah, March of it, 2019. Does it undermine our report? Um, I don't think it does. Um, well, yeah, well, it's, it's, our report doesn't, deal district-wide with the um, changing enrollments. And, and I think that's really what NESDEC is, is reporting on. Uh, we had discussed a little bit about that at one point, and we said, but that's really not our scope, okay. this yeah. report. For in, in a so, lot of ways, our charge was really about a, a population based on today's enrollment. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's actually a larger enrollment than the current enrollment. But it was to the starting district, point, right? District we, we really district just district. created a plausible model for enrollment and right. then ran right. it. That's, that's right. And it was a very early discussions. What are we talking about for population? What do you envision for population? I remember those discussions right. uh, with Dr. Morris. So weirdly enough, I mean, I'm not against including this, but weirdly enough, including this or a new version of it would actually mislead people to say that we actually use this document in right. some yeah. way. To, uh, I would then argue that, that we should shouldn't include, include it, at it at all. Okay. Um, yes, I would agree with that. And that I saves the issue just of which one is most <laughs> <laughs> where those numbers come Right, that's, well, that, that's exactly what we, we should be we, we're we're doing. Right, exactly. We do explain where they came from, yeah. so I, I think okay. 
And if anyone wants to go look, they're going to yes. find out it's not like the numbers are crazy. No, good, you're bad, you know? I like numbers, also get distracted. <laughs> it is a distraction. Take it out. <coughs> Next. Maria? I got nothing else oh. in eight, but there was one, there was a section. Uh, there's something I, I don't know if we talked about, I can't remember. Um, where do we talk about lead? Where we say that we're they're shooting for leads. Talked about it. Well, what what section is this? Point two. We yeah. talked about it in MSBA yeah. well, incentives. It, yes, yeah. six point two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 6. So 1. I did have a comment about that because uh, and uh, well, no, uh, where do, where do you have the lead um, the analysis that we for our project that you, you say you know we're targeting leads. Oh, the leads, so, Yeah, the right. score. Thank you. I could. Uh, yeah, they're in here. They are in here, and I can't think what section they're in. I think they're in the pricing narrative. I have my binder just exploded. All right. Well, I guess I mean, I, it, it's it's not really uh, my comment. Doesn't you don't really have to look at the page to sure. for it to make sense. So we say what we're, that we're targeting lead silver, and yet all of our score sheets are gold. And I would wonder. So one, why would we target silver instead of gold? And two, if we're hitting gold. Why don't we just say that? The, the rationale, um, I, I believe what's on the scorecard is you, you target more points than you actually need at the outset. Right. So it may push us up into gold if you, we might have to even cross that threshold, but the expectation is some of these points will drop out through the design process and even through construction you may lose some. So I think they're, um, they're targeting silver, but the number of points exceeds the threshold for gold currently. Uh, we could explain that. I think so. Yes. I think that would make sense because I, I mean, I was looking at this and well, yeah, I yeah, so say, so on day one, you would yeah. start out with a lead gold score sheet because you were assuming that you were going to get all those points, right? Yeah, you're you're hoping you're being optimistic. You're so not. we need to explain that. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you have to explain. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that actually I like because it's genuinely educational. You know, somebody right. reading through this is actually going to learn something about how a new school building would actually be planned. Right. It informs this, but it also informs yeah. the wider context of how you go about yeah. planning these things. Yeah. It's just good planning. Knowing that some are going to drop out. Right. When I asked by, asked by a condo developer, not that I do condo work anymore, how many units can we fit on this parcel? I always give them a loan number. And then hopefully we can improve as we develop it. Other, other comments, questions on any section? I have a quick, quick question, but that's uh, I think we've never done this. Um, on the MSBA reimbursements. Which section, sorry? Uh, so 8.10, I think. I think it's in here. Probably it's because I was not here at that meeting um, about the points of what is being reimbursed and what is not being reimbursed yeah. by uh, <coughs> MSBA. So a big portion, I think, if we wanted all the site to be reimbursed by the MSBA, we have to cut costs by half, and I think that's not feasible because of, because of the gaps. And also, uh, the other question was about, uh, I don't think that's typical, that was my question. Uh, I was not here for that discussion, so that's, is that typical that the site cost, um, we have to cut it by half, and there's no way by looking at the numbers that we No, we, we're actually working on an urban project now where pretty much all the site cost is eligible. Uh, but the way, the way MSBA is figuring that out is they're taking a percentage of the direct building cost. Um, so you can see on the, spread, on the spreadsheets on page two on the right yeah. side, there's the site cost reimbursement breakout. Yeah. So um, and so the direct building cost is added up there. And I believe it's eight percent, which is considered eligible. Oh, it's right so, up on top. Yep, eight percent. So essentially, is this is skewed towards urban projects and not like in urban projects you don't have as much parking as you have here, and you don't have as much it, time. This this cap does end up benefiting urban projects, but I think that eight percent just is a number pulled out of the air by some people who wanted to control costs. The concern is that educational goals, I think, are really met in the building. I think this is the thinking. Yeah. But your athletic fields and you know building the road to your school is, is your, yours to manage. Uh, they want to limit how far they go outside of the building. So. Okay. And the same goes with the furnishing. I thought that the, the cap was about half of what it's been uh, quoted. So yeah. is that because uh, 
Again, they put a capital so that you don't go over spending or you MSBA is lag behind. Okay. They're, they're really behind. I mean, there was a time there were no MSBA projects, right? I mean, they, it was all on hold. And then, they, and then when they started up again, actually, the, their cap was pretty close to cost at that time. But since then, they've been um, they've been adding a certain percentage per year. I can't remember what the percentage is, but that percentage is does not meet the actual rate of inflation of construction costs. So, construction costs has been doing this, MSBA has been doing this. Okay. Yes. So the cap is too small. Okay. That was good. Okay. What's next? Uh, if we are truly done, um, we can we can. Um, since I have identical uh, items from last time, um, we could touch upon the same same items. I, I personally don't have anything to do. I'm going to jump a little bit ahead. I don't have anything personal to present on a town council meeting. I call on this so unless it got back to me. Um, but I don't know if you have a comment or or uh, data. I mean, we might meet the school committee. But I think Not sure we're going to talk. I thought you were going to talk to Mike. Uh, maybe I was going to talk to Mike. And no, I'm not. That sounds funny. I'm going to report I did not talk to my, Mike. My recollection yeah, is that you were going to follow did. up. Yes. I mean, I'm happy to. If no, 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 no. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. Are you talking about the town council or the school committee? No, we're talking about both. <laughs> both. He hadn't I heard apologize. back from Bachelman and town council, and I think there was confusion over who was following up yeah, the school no, committee. I, I bet if I turn back to this page, it'll say <laughs> Jay has to do that. I think um, you have to talk to the president of the council. So that's Greaseman, right? She yeah. sets the agenda. True. Something I thought Paul also kind of managed things, but I'll, I'll they kind of they kind of work together. Yeah. And, and honestly, town council's a lot of their plate right now. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of figuring it might be easier to get Paul because it's at least he has office hours. <laughs> get another um, right. Yeah. Lynn's pretty widely available. You can yeah. give, give her a try. Okay. I will do that. So, uh, my last question. Go ahead. So. Uh, we've given you a lot of feedback. What's what's next for you guys? Well, we need to um, obviously incorporate that feedback as well as our own pass through right. for all kinds of minor events, right. um, and then bring that back to you as a final product. Um, and you're not going to be around next week. I have a vacation next week, so we're going to need two, maybe three weeks. Uh, we don't need to decide now, but I'm going to propose that when the final draft comes back, or the next draft, whatever we call it, comes back, that maybe we divide up the reading duties. Because um, I, I had difficulty getting through it. In, I, I didn't get through it in one week. Um, no, it took multiple so, weeks. Yeah, so I, never, it, I didn't get through it. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, uh, I mean, honestly, I, I ignored the appendices. I didn't have yeah. the time. So, so maybe it would. Uh, Next time we discuss this, maybe consider that. Or, or, I mean, I'm comfortable with that approach of kind of divide and conquer a little. Uh, or, or, if the executive summary yep. says it all, and if the introductory narratives kind of explain adequately, maybe that's what we focus on. I mean, and and, and, and obviously, you wouldn't be prohibited from reading more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I if you want to go that route, I think. Everybody should read certain sections, and I would have at least two readers per assignment. And I think maybe to mix it up so that not two pe people read all the same way. So, like in Pandas, at least you have at least two readers. But I think we also need, I, I, I think what I'm hearing <laughs> from Richard is that we should also focus our yeah. reading. You know, there are, it will be impossible to get every I and T crossed, as it were, um, in, in certain dense parts of the, of the appendices, probably. Um, but if we can do a conscientious effort to make sure that, that, that the, the kind of explanation of the document as a whole represents a part, um, you know, group consensus, yeah, I, I think if, if let's let's say a reader is sitting down with this thing for the first time, what's what's he going to read? He's going to read the highlights, right? That will kind of explain it to him. And if that message is clear, I think it's in the dense portions, the mm -hmm. details, it's I, I don't think they'll ever get there. You know. I also think you have a good sense of what we had 
yeah. comments on. So yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not anticipating a heavy second round. Uh, no. No, we <laughs> can't do that. No, we, nor do we want to. Anyway. I'll so do. I'll get that to the, okay. the section seven to you within a week, Super. so that you've got that. So you said the executive summary and and any yes. introductory narrative. Introductory narrative to okay. each section. Okay, thank you. But also, so we're just just to reiterate again, for the, our purpose is uh, it's probably around three weeks before we yeah. see that. Correct. Okay. And I'm going to ask a follow up question to the committee. Um, I suspect that we don't have too many other pressing items. Do we wait to hear? Does our group want to wait to hear from TSKP before scheduling our next meeting? You'll have we'll have the independent cost estimate votes oh, next week. That's true. Uh, that could be left to our task force if the committee is comfortable with that. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> Are folks comfortable with the task force handling? Or or we could plan on like a forty minute meeting. It's up to I'm fine either way. What's the likelihood that, that you know that process of reconciliation we talked about? Um, I, I I guess I'll I guess I'll say I'll answer your question this way. I'd rather have a little sort of work group do it, at least for the sake that if what you come up with is there needs to be some greater reconciliation, I don't want to meet just to talk, just to talk th that, that we're going to have to do that. Yeah. I'd rather talk after that's happened. Okay. And the, it, the quotes you're getting are just the estimators saying how much their fees are at this point? Yeah. Okay. And, and they... Oh, I'm, I, sorry. I get, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You meant the bid. Yes. Yeah. The, I'm the being quotes, stupid. The quotes will be bad. I, I, I'm, I'm being crazy. I, was, I thought you were talking about the actual product. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, well, no, what, are, we, are we picking someone then? Yeah, what's going on? We, we'll, be, that, we'll be taking the lowest qualified bidder, and um, I mean, I only solicited four qualified firms. So okay. um, that's, that's why I thought maybe it could be left to the group because it's really a fun, rather functionary thing. I agree. Yeah. Leaving it to the yeah. group because it doesn't yeah. sound like it's worthwhile for us to get together. And I would also suggest that we schedule a meeting for four weeks from now, just so that we can get something and people can make it. Yeah. And yeah. If, if you think that that's a realistic deadline for you yeah. to get it three weeks from now, so we have it. Have a week in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Does that? That's a good goal. I have a question. Do, yeah. you, do we know the cost, independent cost estimator, how long they might take? Two weeks, two weeks. I don't think we can say for sure. I think we had expected over a month, though, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, those, those things will not. They they certainly won't be able to do their process and do any sort of reconciliation before we next meet. That's for no, sure. But, okay. Okay. Sorry. May eighth. Yeah, it's so May eighth. Sounds good. Well, Wednesday. Or fifteenth. May eighth. Unfortunately, doesn't work for me. Oh. But um, okay. for me, did. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm throwing it out there because I figured Allison was saying we could actually yeah. make a decision right now yeah, if no, we were able to, to, I and I was all in favor of doing do that. that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that week, if if anybody was, if if, if you could do a different day, eat day that would be, or I mean that's another early release day I could do earlier in the day, but that might not work out. And 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 Rudy. As long as I can schedule for the month of May on Thursdays, I'm going to be in Boston, okay. so for a class. So Thursdays are not good. Thursdays are not good for me either. I, I suspect we should just send around the usual kind of poll, and we've got time. And I feel like we've got time to figure out the scheduling of it, okay. um, but we'll shoot for sometime that that first week. Okay. So me, so the week of first five, full week, six, first full week, yes. Yeah. And I'd say as a backup for five thirteen. Yeah. If if need be. Okay. Five thirteen? No, the so week of the week of the week of five. Oh the six. week of five thirteen. Yeah, I'm week sorry. Of six, and then oh, I'm still stuck yeah. on Wednesdays, I'm sorry. I think as a backup the third the week of five thirteen. Sure. Um, so Thursdays are no good. Right. And well for two of us anyway. For well I, I think yeah. Um, um, in general, is there a school committee on that Tuesdays? Tuesdays are Tuesdays are bad in that regard, but it depends on the Tuesday. Right. I don't see one that day. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So but that's still out of order. Although that's exactly yeah. that's right. could be my failure to put it in my calendar. I'll probably do one of those um, multi-day ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be I'll get some help. 
Um, and I'm not gonna, I should probably know the answer to this question, but does the school committee meet all summer? Not that I want, not that I'm imagining this drags out that long, but it, there's, there isn't like a hiatus? I think I'm excited to tell you the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to ensure that it puts some affirmative pressure on so, us to yeah. ensure we schedule yes. earlier. Yeah. So, Based on that, since we are meeting on May 8th, should we ask already for a date early June? Well, that, that's that's kind yeah, of yeah, the yeah. I mean, so, this, so, so. there was a, there was my a, brain was going. Yeah. There was a slip. Ta also, just to be clear again, there was a slip task between me and Jonathan. Yeah. But who is going to coordinate with Mike Morris and Anastasia Ordonez to get it on the calendar? So we're going to get we're actually going to get it on the calendar sooner as soon as we can. Yeah. Like sl slot it in for a particular meeting as soon as we can. I think we should target around the beginning of June. Yeah, because I, this year the school finishes early. I think this is on yeah. the 14th. 14th, okay. Uh, well, I will call Mike or email him for both tomorrow. But now we have a sense that, that we're probably looking at a final draft in about four weeks. And that's a, that gives me more context for my, for my conversation. Great. Talked about uh, independent cost estimator. All right, so I, I have yeah. two uh, responses and one response that they wouldn't be doing it. So okay. we'll see if the fourth one responds with the deadline is Wednesday. Next list. Um, I don't think we have any invoices. Um, there are no invoices. Yeah. In the interest of full disclosure, Berkshire designed and sent in invoice number three for asking for a few more hundred dollars uh, with no real explanation. Uh, I conveyed my dismay at seeing that invoice and I was told to ignore it. So, oh. I, but that did happen. Good yeah. job, yes. Anthony. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, so, that's what a public servant looks like. Right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there was no change order and we really right. ended. So, right. yeah. yeah. No, no new invoices and we won't expect any until your final invoice and then the independent cost estimator. So we're, we're wrapping up. Okay. okay. Speaking of wrapping up, I think yeah, we can wrap adjourn. up. <laughs> Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, with that. Thank you. Thank you.